Hi, my name is Chris Herrera, Senior Principal Solutions Architect and Product Owner of Connectors here at Seek. I'm going to talk to you today about some of the features that are included with our ADX connector. Before diving into the demo, I'd like to take a second to talk about where connectors fit within the Seek architecture. This slide represents a very high level description of the components that make up Seek. At the top are the three experiences that Seek provides in Workbench, Organizer, and Data Lab. These are powered by Seek Cortex, which includes, among other things, the calculation engine and the built-in security model. At the bottom level, we have the connectors. This is what provides Seek access to data. Seek in and of itself is not a database. It works on your trusted sources of data. And as such, we have connectors to those various data sources. In this demo, we're gonna be talking about the, specifically the connector to ADX. In order to see the basic functionality of how Seek works with ADX, Let's start with a very simple table. I'm here in the Azure portal, specifically using the query tool for ADX. Let's take a look at the table called Cooling Tower A of the Client Test Database. Taking a look at this, with a simple Custo query, I'm going to take the first 10 rows for Cooling Tower A. We see that there are a few signals, compressor power, optimizer, relative humidity, temperature, and wet bulb, that are indexed according to time. This is a very simplistic table, but it's going to show how this data would be re represented within Seek. Moving over to Seek, we can go ahead and search for the data that's already been indexed. Because the ADX connector supports asset trees, we can see here that the client test database shows up first, along with cooling tower A, which is, as you'll remember, the table name, and then the signals that we indexed. We can quickly go ahead and select a few to then begin trending that data. You can see here that ADX provides that data very quickly so that we can go around and be able to search without having to worry too much about what the query time is gonna be. And we can then perform all of the analytics on top of this that we would normally want to do. For example, if I wanted to do a profile search to find potentially an interesting point in this compressor power curve, then what I'll go ahead and do is pull this compressor power, execute that, and it's going to create what we call a capsule across all these interesting points, which we can then either chain to just see the interesting values of time, which it'll then pull from ADX relatively quickly, or we can look at it in capsule view so that we can overlay the periods and understand what the differences were between these times. Again, all of this data is coming from ADX, and the user doesn't necessarily have to understand Custo or how to query it or any of the credentials or access patterns that have to be dealt with in order to access that data. Once it's been set up by a Seek administrator, they're able to access this data without really concerning themselves with the, the connection details that they would normally have to worry about. Now that we've seen how a user can access and analyze data from within ADX using Seek, let's take a look at how an administrator would configure a connection to the table that we just looked at the data from. I'm going to click down here on the data sources pane, which will bring up this list of data sources I'm currently connected to. And this is our cooling tower data set that we were just analyzing. I'm going to click here on manage data sources, which is a link that will appear if I'm an administrator of Seek. Once this pulls up, I'll be able to see the data sources that I'm currently connected to with Seek. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the cooling tower connection and click on manage. The ADX connection configuration is made up largely of two parts. One is the cluster configuration and the second is the table configuration. The cluster configuration, which is highlighted here, is the cluster information that defines the security aspects as well as the location of both the database and the cluster. The access key is put into a secrets file that only the process that is running the agent has access to. This section in here is the table definition. The table definition defines how Seq will access data from within the table. In this case, we have a data column query, which basically says, get all the column names except for time and generate a signal from that. That's what we're going to use to determine what signals will be pulled. You'll remember we only had those few, few signals, compressor power, optimizer, relative humidity and temperature. In this case, by using a data column query, I'm able to dynamically pull those if I add a new column later on. 
through an ingestion process, for an example. However, if I'm fairly confident that that's not going to be the case, I can statically define that a list of those signals here in the data columns field instead. I define my time column name, and then I have a number of different options that I can set depending on what my data looks like. For example, I've got a group by section here. If I have columns that define any sort of hierarchy beyond database and table name, let's say I wanted to define regions, lines, areas, countries, those types of things, I can create an array of group by to then further allow my hierarchy to be built out within Seek to enable more discoverability of the data. Additionally, if I wanted to go ahead and pre-compute that because doing a distinct group by can be a very expensive query, we could use the result of a materialized table, for example, to pull from a computed group by result. Additionally, if there's a metadata table instead, we could pull from there as well to get the data columns. Additionally, we can provide both group by and data request properties that allow us to define how the Cousteau client should behave when making a request. There are a number of different ways in which this could be configured to match the data architecture which has been created within ADX. Now that we've seen how a user can analyze and visualize data from ADX within Seek and how an administrator can configure the connection to ADX from Seek, let's talk a little bit about some additional capabilities of the connector. When we talk about typical deployments of the connector within an architecture, ADX can be leveraged as the primary data source or it can be utilized within a hybrid architecture, one in which there are traditional historians on premise and ADX is only servicing native data that is only sent to the cloud or potentially difficult to access data sources on premise. When we looked at the configuration within the administration panel, we saw that there were two main configuration elements, the cluster and the table. You can have any number of clusters configured and any number of tables associated with those clusters. When we talk about the actual data types that the ADX connector is capable of reading, currently the ADX connector supports samples and asset trees. There are two types of data models that we support from a signal perspective within ADX. An aligned data model in which each tag has its own column aligned to a singular timestamp, or one in which you have a pivoted model in which you have a single value column and a column that denotes which tag those values are associated with. It's important to note that the seek data type will be derived from the data type of the column that has been defined within ADX. When we talk about the data table definition configuration, the asset tree is something that we did not really look at in the demo. However, in this case, we can see here that there's a group by specified for a region and a tower, which means under the database and the table name, we would like to have a child node of region and under the region, a child node of towers. In order to build this hierarchical relationship of region and tower, a distinct query is then sent to ADX to build out what the hierarchy should look like. In this case, we have the database name, the table name, and then region one and cooling tower one with all of the signals associated to the last element within the group by array. In this case, cooling tower one. This hierarchy can be either queried dynamically or it can be pre-computed as a materialized view for more performant access during indexing. The connector also has the capability of transform queries. This is useful when you have a dynamic data type that's holding a JSON value, and that value might need to be tabularized before it's read into Seek. In this case, we leverage a transform query to extend event value and event type to be reflected as a table when it comes into Seek. And we do that just by leveraging the extract JSON function within Kusto and projecting the event type and event value and the timestamp that they're associated with. I want to spend just a second talking about external data access and external tables to access data within, ex within a data lake. ADX can be used to define an external table to access data within a data lake. 
This is useful if you are working to understand what data should be migrated into an ADX table for more performant access, or if you have very sparse information that's more contextual in nature, for example, batch information, batch IDs, information that's readily able to be cached within Seq, as external table data access is less performant than if data was loaded directly into the table. Thanks for watching this demo detailing the capabilities of the ADX connector within Seek. If you have any further questions on this or any Seek capability, please contact your Seek representative.